this video we are going to discuss about the super heterodyne receiver so this super heterodyne receiver is one of the very commonly used type of receivers in communication systems okay and it is having a lot of advantages as compared to the other type of receivers so let us see about the block diagram the important points and the working and the important there is a waveforms okay so super heterodyne receiver or super heterodyne means the process of converting of a higher frequency by combining it with other frequency and forming a lower frequency that is the process of combining of two frequencies to form a low frequency is called super heterodyne or the process of super heterodyne is called like that so here what we are doing is we are taking the frequency that is received through the antenna and then we are taking the frequency from the local oscillator and then we are combining it in the mixer and then we form a frequency which is lesser than the two values okay and this process is called super heterodyne process and why we are going for the super heterodyne type of receivers is because we know that when we are taking the same rf frequency or the same high frequency and we do the entire processing it is very costly so the high frequency processing is very costly so we cannot go for that so we mix it that is we take the higher frequency we mix it with other frequency and we form a lower frequency component and then we do the processing so it is cost friendly okay so that's why that is one of the reasons we are going for the super heterodyne receivers okay so that is a basic principle of super heterodyne receivers here we are taking the radio frequency which is a very high frequency and then we mix it with a local oscillator frequency and we form a intermediate frequency which will be of lower value okay so let us see the block diagram of a super heterodyne receiver then you will get a very clear idea so this is an antenna and this antenna will receive the radio frequency waves so we know that in communication systems we will be using very high frequency carrier waves that is we are using rf carrier waves radio frequency carrier waves we are using for communication right we have already done a video on what is the need for communication and why we are going for this high frequency carrier waves okay so we are generally using rf waves or radio frequency carrier waves in communication so that waves will be received with the help of this antenna and then there is an rf amplifier this rm uh, amplifier is actually a low noise amplifier that is used for cutting out all the noises and it will amplify the rf waveform or the rf carrier okay so if you see the waveforms this is the rf carrier and this is the amplified version of the rf carrier so this amplified radio frequency carrier is given to the mixer and along with that we are giving a frequency or a waveform from the local oscillator the frequency of this waveform we are taking as flo and that is equal to frf plus fif so this is the frf plus fif will be the frequency of the local oscillator so it is clear that the frequency of the local oscillator will be any way greater than the frequency of the incoming rf wave that is the criteria for designing a local oscillator okay so the local oscillator frequency should be greater than the frequency of the rf wave that is the intended wave which we are we are receiving or whichever wave we are interested in that wave's frequency is frf and the local oscillator frequency is always selected greater than that of the the wave's frequency or the rf carrier frequency okay then there is a mixing happening in the mixer and mixing means two components are actually produced while this mixing process is taking place there is a addition component there is a difference component so when this two waveforms that is frf and flo is added we'll get a addition component okay that is frf plus flo okay and what will be that that will be equal to 
FRF plus what is FLO? It is FRF plus FIF. So FRF plus FIF. So it will be 2 times 2FRF plus FIF. So this is the component. There is one component that we are getting as an output of the mixer which is an addition component. Okay. Then another component that we are getting due to the difference. Difference component. Okay. And that is nothing but FRF minus FLO. Sorry, it's not like that. It is the reverse. Why? Because we know that FLO is always greater than FRF. So, FLO minus FRF. And that will be equal to F, what is the value of FLO? That is local oscillator frequency. It is FRF plus FIF minus FRF. So, you will be getting the output as FIF. Okay. FIF. So, these are two components. One is an addition component, one is a difference component. So, our aim is to produce a lower frequency, not a higher frequency, right? So, what, what is the purpose of doing this mixing? The mixing we are doing to produce a comparatively lower frequency as compared to that of this RF frequency, right? So, when the mixing is happening, there are two components generated. One is an addition component, one is a difference component. The addition component is greater than that of this FRF. See, it is 2 FRF plus FIF that we don't want. So, we will take only the difference component and we will filter out the addition component. Why? Because it is actually having frequency more than that of our RF wave. So, the cost will be again more. So, we don't want that. We want to reduce the cost by reducing the frequency. So, we will go for this difference component and we will filter out this addition component. Okay. So, here at the output of the mixer, we have only one value that is a difference component which is FIF or a wave we will produce with this which is having a frequency FIF. Now, this FIF means it is the intermediate frequency. IF means intermediate frequency. Okay. So, now onwards, the frequency will be FIF only. Okay. So, we have actually reduced the frequency value from FRF to FIF by mixing the waveform, that is our initial RF waveform with the local oscillator frequency. And this process is actually called superheterodyne process. Okay. And then this FIF wave is given to the IF that is intermediate frequency amplifier. See here, if you observe the waveforms, you should always study the block diagram with, by comparing it with the waveforms. That is what is actually happening here. See, here is the process of mixing happening. There is a local oscillator wave and this amplified wave is getting mixed here. So, here there is a mixer. Then after the mixer, you can see that the wave frequency has reduced. So, we will get a IF carrier wave. And then it is given to the IF amplifier to produce the amplified IF wave. Okay, so this much portion is cleared. Next one is a detector. So, the detector means a demodulator. So, we need to actually recover our original information signal or our original message signal. Right. We know that in uh, modulation, we take a carrier, we modulate the carrier in accordance with our information signal or our message signal but we want to recover our original information or message signal from this carrier waveform right that's what that is why we are actually designing receivers here also for that purpose that is for the purpose of information recovery we are using a detector or you can call it as a demodulator so we will demodulate the waveform so consider that we are sending an audio component so the output of the detector will be a audio component and then we will give that one amplifier that is a audio frequency amplifier. AF amplifier means since it is an audio component or an audio signal is the original message signal. 
so after recovery we will get our original audio component then it is amplified using a audio frequency amplifier and then it is given to the speaker so this type of receivers we are generally used in either radio transmission or in televisions okay the super heterodyne receiver or other important type of receivers we use in this either radio transmission or for television okay so we will be having a audio waveform as output so we will amplify the waveform then we will give to the speaker and then we will play the original audio component itself so this is actually very simple thing only thing is that you should be knowing what is happening in this session only this portion is the complicated part here is actually the super heterodyne process happening that is the process of converting a radio frequency to an intermediate frequency by mixing it with the local oscillator frequency okay so that is actually happening in a super heterodyne receiver i hope it is clear so these are the basic parts of the blocks present in a super heterodyne receiver and other than that if you observe you can see that there is a ganged tuning circuit here see there is a ganged tuning and it is connected to the rf amplifier and the mixer and the local oscillator okay so consider that you are intended to receive a that is you are interested in receiving a waveform of frequency f r f but it there is a shift happening to the the r f carrier frequency so in order to receive the the original waveform we are tuning these r f amplifier oscillator and the mixer in this area with a gang tuning so whatever shift is happening to our original waveform so here we will be receiving our original waveform right so whatever shifting is happening to this waveform that much shift is applied to these components so that we will receive our exact waveform and this is one important advantage of the super heterodyne receiver and this property is called selectivity the super heterodyne receiver is highly selective it will selectively receive your intended or interested waveform because whenever there is a shift happening to this there is a frequency shift is happening to this waveform that much shift is also applied with the help of the gang tuning circuit okay so the shift will be nullified and we'll recover our original waveform itself and this gang tuning is achieved with the help of a gang tuning capacitor okay next important part of this super heterodyne receiver is agc agc means automatic gain control so this automatic gain control is applied to all important components of the super heterodyne receiver to maintain a sustainable gain okay so there is a gain maintained within this circuit with the help of a gain control that is called automatic gain control so these two things are very important advantages of using a super heterodyne receiver that is selectivity and gain control okay so these two things are very important or it makes super heterodyne receiver very much good or it is to the there are the two advantages okay next important topic which has also been asked in a lot of numerical questions is image frequency so let us discuss the concept of image frequency so consider that you were interested in receiving the frequency f r f okay so this is actually our interested frequency and we are naming it as f r f okay so when f r f is received what is the output of the mixer that is f i f why we are getting only f i f is because we are only taking the difference component we know that the mixer output is not just f i f there are two components there is one addition component and there is one subtraction or there is one difference component but we are only interested in this difference component right so this is the difference component okay the other component we have filtered out why because it was a more greater frequency or it was a higher frequency than the f r f that we are not interested in okay so consider that we are interested in receiving a frequency f r f so when f r f is received our output is f i f right so next consider that you are receiving a frequency due to some changes or some shifts happening and the 
now consider that due to some shifts happening or due to some changes we are receiving a frequency or we are receiving a waveform of frequency f r f plus 2 f i r okay so now we are receiving a frequency f r f plus 2 f i f so this is not our interested frequency but due to some changes this is the frequency that we are getting here okay so it will be now f r f plus 2 f i f this is the frequency that we are getting but we are not really interested in receiving this frequency now let us check what is the output coming at the mixer so the output of the mixer is we are only taking the difference component okay so it will be the difference between these two waveforms that is difference in the frequency between these two waveforms here the frequency of the received waveform is frf plus 2 fif the local oscillator frequency is frf plus fif so here clearly this frequency is greater than the local oscillator frequency so while taking the difference you have to take this frequency minus flo okay so the output of the mixer which is only difference component we are taking okay the difference component is f r f plus 2 f i f minus f l o so this is the received frequency and this is the local oscillator frequency and if you substitute the value of local oscillator frequency you will be getting f r f plus f i f okay and while opening the bracket there is minus f r f minus f i f and the output you are getting is f r f minus f r f these two components will get cancelled and this is 2 f i f minus f i f which will be f i f itself so even if we are receiving a frequency equal to f r f plus 2 f i f the output of the mixer is exactly same as that of receiving a frequency equal to f r f right so this frequency component is called image frequency that is the frequency component which can produce a output same as that of our interested frequency is called image frequency okay the image frequency is f i m image is equal to f r f plus 2 f i f okay so this is the image frequency our original frequency or interested frequency is f r f so even if you receive our interested frequency or this image frequency the output at the mixer is same so there will be a difference there will be a change in the addition component but when you because we are only taking the difference component we are filtering out the addition component right so the output of the mixer at the output of the mixer we are having two components there is also an addition component also but we are filtering out that addition component we are only taking the difference component and this difference component we are getting same for both these cases 1 and 2 for both the two cases we are getting the same value at the output of the mixer as the difference component so we are only interested in receiving the frf frequency but we are receiving this frequency even then we will get a same output at the mixer and when we are uh, i mean decoding or demodulating this frequency we will not get our original audio component we will get or we will hear some other audios okay because we are not actually receiving our original frequency this is the original frequency but we are receiving this frequency of waveform which is the image frequency but even then we are getting the same output at the mixer okay so this is actually a problem which is called image frequency problem okay and this equation is very important this is the equation for the image frequency the image frequency fim is equal to frf plus twice the intermediate frequency okay so this is how you do problems on solving the value for image frequency okay so in uh, competitive examinations you will 
you will find this equation very much useful because a lot of questions can come from this area connecting to the image frequency intermediate frequency all those okay so you should be knowing this concept so the image frequency is actually a problem which is created by some other frequency which is actually not our original frequency but even then we will get a same output as that of our original frequency at the mixer okay so we will mistake that we are receiving our original waveform but we are not actually receiving the correct waveform okay so this problem is called image frequency problem okay so in this video we have discussed about the superheterodyne receiver their waveforms all important points we have uh, discussed that is a gang tuning what is the importance of gang tuning what is automatic gate control what is image frequency all those things we have discussed okay so these are the basics of superheterodyne receiver and also we'll be uploading a separate video on the numericals of superheterodyne receiver because for any competitive examinations at least one question will be from this area okay so we'll be doing numerical question videos also okay so if you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up please do share it with your friends and if you want more videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching